I'm gonna have to lay in my bed. I'm not getting out of this motorhome now. I'm here trying to help anybody. They wrecked the thing. It just blows my mind. And I took those keys right there. Doubt very seriously this video will get that many views. Buying an RV could be the biggest mistake you make in your life. Let me explain. Lately, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos where customers are complaining about the quality and warranty and workmanship of the RVs. I've owned several different RVs now for approximately 20 years. I can most certainly tell you that it's no walk in the park to go through the RV purchasing experience, the warranty period, and owning an RV in general. Purchasing an RV can be a very daunting and eye-opening experience. Lots of times folks do not realize what they're getting into when they purchase an RV. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that most people do not do their research before they decide to purchase an RV. With all the social media that we have and all of the internet search engines that we have and all of the forums and places you can go research before you purchase an RV. Everyone should have the tools at their disposal to do the necessary research on any RV they purchase before they purchase the RVs. I think lots of times an RV purchase is a very emotional process and people get hung up on the prettiness, they get hung up on the styling, they get hung up on the paint jobs, they get hung up on the floor plans, and they get hung up on the capabilities of a particular RV that they're interested in. I think what the vast majority of people who purchase RVs don't do is they don't do their proper research and background on the manufacturer, warranty issues, failure issues, manufacturing issues. It started with a 24-foot travel trailer. It was a Fleetwood Pioneer. It had no slide outs and it was our first ever RV purchased. Obviously it was a tow behind. It was only 24 feet so I could have a reasonably sized truck, not a truck too too large to tow that RV. And that RV had no slide outs on it so there were no issues whatsoever associated with the slide outs. And for the most part that RV was problem free although it did have issues that we had to take it back for warranty work. The second RV I owned was a Keystone Cougar and it was a Thor Industries RV. Didn't have too many problems with the RV as well, although it did have issues that were unexpected. That RV had some water leakage, there were some fit and finish issues, and there were issues with the slide outs. I purchased the Keystone Cougar fifth wheel from Camping World, and they were able to address most of the warranty issues. With every RV purchase we made, we decided to always upsize on our RVs. The next RV we purchased was a 40 foot toy hauler, triple axle, and it was a Keystone Raptor. I wanted an RV where we could put some four-wheelers in the rear as well as a motorcycle because at the time I was riding motorcycles. I had in my mind that we would haul the motorcycle to the places like the mountains where I could unload the motorcycle and go riding in the mountains. We actually took several fun trips with the Raptor and actually I enjoyed the ability to put the motorcycle in the rear and unload it when we got to where we were going. That toy hauler was not trouble free. We had issues with leaking. We had issues with the slide outs. We had fit and finish issues. There were cracks in the fiberglass on the outside, as well as all the decals on that RV fading out within almost a year. Keystone actually did send me a whole set of new decals. They sent me the decals, but they were not gonna pay for the installation. So I actually never installed those decals. And when I finally traded in, the toy hauler, I provided the dealer with the decals so that they could install them if the new owner wanted those installed. So as you can tell, with each iteration of an RV that I purchased, there seemed to be more and more problems, but I think the emotional side of purchasing an RV took precedence over actually doing the research on all the problems these RVs are inherently prone to. So then, ultimately, we decided to go with a motorhome. We ended up purchasing a 2014 Thor Motor Coach Palazzo. I really wanted a diesel pusher because I was so used to towing the trailers and the fifth wheels 
with a diesel pickup truck. So naturally, I wanted to go with a motorhome that had a diesel engine. The reason for having a motorhome with a diesel engine is you get the power, you get the comfort, the engine is in the rear, it's not noisy, and you have the air suspension. So really when I was looking for a diesel pusher, ultimately I was more interested in the capabilities of the engine, drivetrain, air brakes, air ride, all the things that diesel pusher had to offer, but I really wasn't looking too much into the house part of the RV. The Palazzo is an entry-level diesel pusher. At the time, the Palazzo was essentially, and I really don't like to use cheap, but it is. The Palazzo was about the cheapest diesel pusher anyone could get into, especially back in 2013 and 2014. 2013 was the first year Thor Motor Coach built the Palazzo. I actually ended up purchasing a 2014 year model at the end of 2013. The reason why I've not told this story on YouTube before is because we're into 2024 now, I've seen more and more videos of upset customers, customers with warranty issues, and customers who have just outrageous problems with their RVs. So let's get right into the story of this 2014 Thor Motor Coach Palazzo. We had originally purchased the Palazzo in about September of 2013. I remember it to this day. We went in to Camping World to go do the walkthrough on the 2013 Palazzo. Right out of the gate, there were issues with the Palazzo, but it was almost as if Camping World was just shrugging those off, saying, oh, we'll fix those issues. No, it, no, you know, there's no problem. They really wanted us just to take the motor home and leave with it. The first mistake I made was signing all the paperwork before I did the PDI on that Palazzo. Camping World forced us into signing the paperwork before doing the PDI. I think the first word of advice I can give any RV purchaser of a new RV is do not sign any paperwork whatsoever until you get that RV inspected by an independent inspector and do a full walkthrough and do a full PDI on that RV before you purchase it. We drove that Palazzo home that day knowing there were issues with the slide out. Camping World told us no problem, we'll fix it, it's not going to be a big deal at all. So, like most people would do, because again, it becomes an emotional thing, you've got this brand new RV you just purchased, it's shiny, it's new, you want to go take it on a camping trip, you're ready to go put your stuff in it, basically you're ready to load, you know, load it up like you would moving furniture into your home, because after all, it is your second home, for some people it's their vacation home. So on the very first day, we got the motor home, to our house and we parked it in our spot that we we're going to park it in. The first thing I did was is I ran the large slide out out on that motorhome. There was a huge problem. The slide out started making loud popping noises and then the slide out started going out crooked. The rear portion of the slide out which is if you're looking behind me is at the back. The bottom of the slide out moved out before the top. I knew this was not right. So I was immediately on the phone with Camping World and explaining the situation to them. And they just simply said, bring it back to us, we'll fix it. So I took the motor home back to Camping World. It was there for about a week the first time. And they said, come pick it up, it's fixed. And I'm like, well, what did you do to it? Well, we just, we adjusted the slide out. Little did I know, there was not much to adjusting a Schwintec slide out. I had not done enough research on Schwintec specifically. Even though I knew that RV had a Schwintec, I had not researched all the problems back in 2013 in 2014 that Schwintec had on all these RVs. So we took the motor home, home again. I got about two operations on the large slide and guess what, it failed again. More popping, more loud noises, and then we were unable to get the slide out back in. So I was back on the phone with Camp World again. And by this time, Camp World had referred me to the techs at Thor Motor Coach. Ultimately, we had to unplug the motors, which are little bitty, teeny tiny 12 volt motors on each side of this large slide out that move that entire heavy slide in and out. Little eeny tiny tiny wires that go to this Schwintec slide out. I was, I was flabbergasted. I had no idea it, it had little bitty motors running such a large slide. So me and my wife and a friend, we were able to push the slide out back in enough to get it back to Camping World. By this time, Camping World said that there's nothing they could do, they can't fix it. They've never seen this problem before. Camping World called Thor Motor Coach and had Thor Motor Coach send out two texts to our local Camping World about a week later. So basically the two texts came to Camping World from Indiana down to North Carolina to fix the Schwintec slide out on that Palazzo. And you notice I said that Palazzo. This is only the beginning of the horrific situation we encountered with our motorhome purchase. 